the great Martin Gallegos <laughs> from MLB.com is joining us. And I've enjoyed this part of the program is bringing up to people overreactions. Because everybody, because in your business, you need content. Everybody's got to provide it to MLB.com, Athletic, ESPN, CBS. Where everybody's got to put. So what is everybody doing? First reactions of the weekend. So give me your overreactions the first few games of the season. Well, if you go by that first opening series, you think the offense might be in trouble. I mean, three runs in, in three games. But um, last night, it was nice to see them break out. Um I mean, it's it's hard to take away too much from that. I mean, they ran into three pretty good pitchers with the Angels. Um, it was nice to see Moeller go out there on opening night, especially after the spring that he had. It wasn't the greatest of springs. And for him to go opening night and, and you know, help the team win, um, that was promising. Um, so I think overall, just pitching, pitching side, that's going to, it's always important, pitching, right? Um, so I feel, I feel like the pitching, we still don't know what it's going to be like. Um, you know, we've had some, some good outings, some not so good outings, but, um, you know, we'll see where they are, you know, in a month from now or so, but, um, you know, still a lot, a lot of games to be played. I got to tell you last night's game in, in, in this ballpark in cold weather, if you would have told me one of the coldest games we've all been around that the score was going to be 12 to 11, I would have never bet that. Yeah. I mean, you, you Crazy. Would think on a night like that, hard runs are going to be hard to come by. You know, the, I, I know there's, you know, certain nights here when it's warm and you get games like that, but to see, you know, that much offense, it was pretty incredible. And I mean, credit to the A's, they, they, they fought to the end and Seth Browning, that Homer off of Emmanuel class a only gave up three homers all of last year. Uh, that was impressive. So, I mean, it speaks to the resilience, but yeah, that was a wacky game for sure. You know, the one thing that you look at with this Cleveland team is no matter what the score, no matter the style of the game, like it's, it's, it's like, it's like a boxer that can be a counter puncher can come right after you could be in a slug fest can play. It's like a, a boxer that can win anyway. That's what Cleveland reminds me of any style you want to go. I can play that style. Yeah, I was talking about that earlier today. I mean, their their offense is just it's you know it's pesky. You know, one through nine, those guys don't strike out. They always put the ball in play. And when you do that, you know, you have a chance to put together you know offensive performances like that. You know, you just got to put the ball in play. We saw the A's make a couple of mistakes on defense, and that can happen. You know, with a lot of other teams, if you just put the ball in play, you know, the, the old saying, right? Good things will happen. And I mean, they they've got a good philosophy over there. They've it seems like they've done a rebuild, you know, the right way and kind of, you know, you hope that's, you know, kind of a situation that you could have with the A's here in the next couple of years where, you know, these guys come up, you know, they, they come up through the minors together and they come up and now they're, you know, World Series contenders. I mean, we saw them go on a nice run last year. They were, you know, they had a chance to go all the way, but, um, you know, they're set up for a couple of years here now to be a really good team. In this season, Este Uri Ruiz, how many different times do you think we'll have his first name pronounced? This season in 162 games, I've already heard a few. So it's, it's a, crazy, it's still a work right? In progress. Yeah. Like I'm just going on what base Este Uri. It's what baseball's saying, so I'm going with it. I mean, PA broadcast, the manager. I mean, everything seems a little different. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of ways to say it, but uh, you know, one thing about him, I, I would say, you know, you asked me takeaways from early on. Yeah. Um, you know, he's been hitting the ball hard. He's, you know, he's been getting big hits. Last night, I mean, he cut the lead to one run there in the tenth with that double. So. Um, you know, he's, he's putting the ball in play and I mean, we haven't seen him, you know, use his speed that much yet. Uh, I don't think he's stolen the base yet, but I'm sure that part of his game is going to show up here pretty soon. But, um, you know, he's overall, I'd say he's been, you know, first three games, first four games, um, you know, in there every day in center field, defensively, offensively, he seems to be a positive. I feel like if he just makes contact, right. I can see if he hits a two, two, two hop, two hopper in between short and third, they got no shot. Oh, yeah. Like, if he just puts the ball in play and doesn't pop it up, line drives and on the ground, his speed is so dynamic, he is going to be valuable. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, we haven't really seen it uh, show up too much yet. I mean, we saw, you know, that tremendous play. I mean, that catch he had on opening night was incredible. That, yeah. That's one of the best. That's an early candidate for catch of the year. I mean, the, just the amount of covered, covered ground he covered in a short amount of time. I mean, it was pretty incredible. Um, so, I mean, I think as we go on through the season – I think, you know, the A's, you know, they're not an offense that has a ton of pop. They're going to need to find a way to generate runs. And if he can just get find a way to get on base, you know, he's going to, you know, manufacture his own runs. We're going to see some, you know, you know, like back in the day with Ricky, some Ricky runs, some Uri runs, I guess. Yeah, I, I like it. Yeah, and that's the thing for me. We talked about it in spring. you got to figure out a way to score without hitting home runs. you just got to do it. And then they go out in spring and they steal a bunch of bases. 
and then we get to the season, we yeah. don't have a ton of stolen bases. Yeah. I'm I'm at a point, and like last night we had uh, who got thrown out at home? Was it Seth Brown got thrown out at home last night? I think Seth Brown. Yeah. I'm like I'm fine with that. I I, I want to challenge every outfielder. I, I we got nothing to lose. If you want to just uh, if you want to talk from a win loss standpoint, A's got nothing to lose. I want to steal bases. I want everybody. You got the green light. Everybody go. Everybody first to third. Take ninety feet. Be be as as aggressive as you possibly can. That to me, that kind of style of play, the running A's, is how they can score runs. Yeah, for sure. And I think I think over the course of the season, we'll see that. I, I was surprised. I was surprised to see. You know, they've only had one stolen base. I think Seth Brown is the only stolen base so far. Um, you know, he's a guy who could who could reach double digit stolen bases. I mean, they've got you know Nick Allen, depending on how much he's going to play. Ramon Laureano could do it. Uh, Ruiz. I feel like he could lead the league in stolen bases if they, you know, give him the green light. Um, so I think it's going to have to come into play. Like, like we said, there's not a lot of, you know, one guy you can rely on on this offense that's going to produce, you know, a hundred runs or something. You got to, you know, find a way to, to manufacture these runs. And I mean, we're seeing it all across baseball, the stolen base numbers, how high up they are now. And uh, the A's got enough speed to, to take advantage of that, of these new rules with the, you know, the bigger bases and everything. I've said this for years. Prospects are suspects until they do something. And stop telling me about the minor leagues. But this year, I'm a little different. Knowing, knowing where we are and what's down there, every single time, because I got to do the minor league report during the broadcast, every single time I hear Tyler Soderstrom, every single time I hear, well, Geloff's hurt, but when he hits, every, Kevin Smith, Kevin Smith's body of work from the last month, spring training, to this hot start, this guy, whatever, I know he made swing changes, and maybe you can speak to that. He's made swing changes, and he's now been hot for a an extended period of time. Like every single time he hits, I'm now, I used to not do it. I'm now looking at it going, I, at some point, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's becoming a large body of work for sure. I mean, it, ha- it started, you know, towards the end of last year and AAA finally seemed to figure it out, carried that into spring training. I-, I honestly thought, you know, we were in that last week of spring. I thought he, he was going to make the team at that point. You know, he did everything he could. I know it was a tough decision for them to leave him off it, but um, he's going to be up here soon. I mean, there's no no question in my mind he's going to be up here soon. You've seen how he, you know, he got off in AAA. I know Reno is Reno and, you know, he can't really, you know, it could be deceiving at times, but I think he's a guy who, you know, we've seen the work that he's put in. We've seen enough of a sample size now to where it's it's not just a small sample size. He's he's improved. He's made improvements as a hitter. And I'm looking forward to seeing him back up here because, I mean, the bat seems to be uh, able to play. Defensively, he was always good. You know, at, at third base when he was up here last year, the defensive numbers were among the best in baseball from all third basemen. So, um, you know, he's just waiting on his shot, and I think he's going to get it here pretty soon for sure. Would you be shocked if he's up here playing shortstop on a regular basis? No, I think – you know, he's been playing short down there in the minors. He came up as a shortstop. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see him up here as a shortstop. Because, you know, you can sit here and say, ah, it's triple A, ball flies. Ah, it's spring training. But you still got to play. Yeah. And he's and he's been like, I mean, he was Babe Ruth for a month, Barry Bonds for a month down there. And then spring training tore it up. I'm with you. I was shocked. I was actually shocked going like, you're really going to leave him off the roster. But uh, we will see. But that – it's interesting that some of these guys right now in a, you're playing for something, just not wins and losses. You're playing to stay here because I know the front office is looking at those guys down triple A knowing that things don't go well here. Things don't go well early here. There will be moves. Man. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I was looking at that Vegas roster. There's so many guys who, I mean, they could come up at any point, you know, you get like, a, like JJ Blade down there, yeah. Jordan Diaz, uh, Kevin Smith, like we said, uh, a lot of those guys are they're they're big league ready. There's no you know need for them to to develop or anything. It's just you know they're down there waiting for their name to be called and they're going to go off. I think you know a guy like JJ Blade, I, I could see him just completely going off at AAA. And uh, you know if they need an outfielder out here, he's going to be the first guy called up. So a lot of I, all these guys. I mean, we saw last year how many players came up and down. I don't know if it's going to be as crazy as last year with that amount of players coming up, but there's, there's still going to be a, a pretty good amount of guys who you see come up here and, and get a chance to see if they can prove themselves in the major league level. All right. This may just be me. And I don't want to talk about stats here. It's just Ramon Laureano has been a little different since he's come back. I think about last year and his spring training this year, now back up here, always loved his fight. Always loved how he played like a football guy, a tough guy. 
it just seems he's been a little different. Is it me? I think last year for sure. I mean, when he came back, some, it definitely felt like it was off. Um, as he came into spring, I feel like he was really focused and really just like, okay, I need to prove myself, not just to myself, but to my teammates, uh, you know, to the A's that, you know, I'm better than what I was last year when I came back. And it has been encouraging to see him homer the last couple, uh, two and three nights, I think. So, um, but yeah, it does seem like it's still a little off. He's not, you know, the Ramon that we saw, you know, pre-suspension yet. Um, I think he feels like he could get to that point. I know his teammates feel like he can as well, but. But also just the way he used to internet interact with the field guys. He was just a little more gregarious. Yeah. He's just, he's been, I guess, a little more reserve. He's been a little bit different. Yeah. I think, you know, talking to him in spring, I think he definitely felt, you know, coming back. I don't know if embarrassment's the right word, but he felt a little awkward, you know, coming back to it, you know, after, I mean, everybody knows what happened with the yeah. suspension. So, um, you know, it, it can be weird coming back and, and, and just the vibe, the way people look at you is, is just different. You know, the opinions of people about you change. So I think he felt that a lot. And I think it's probably something he still, you know, maybe struggles with at times, but I think he's handling it a little better. Um, but I think for him, you know, he's looking to kind of, you know, prove himself and get himself back on track. And I think once, he's able to do that if he's able to do that hopefully you see him you know a little bit more like the Ramon of old that like you mentioned that you know the guy was having a little bit more fun out there but he's yeah at the same time yeah he has always been a pretty serious guy and that's part of what makes him so good I think is he just he's working non-stop Ryan Note is a guy that we got to meet in spring training I like him a lot we've had him again on the show uh since the start of the year got the first hit got a double we know he's good defensively he's a rule five guy he's got to be here where he gets offered back so far, what you've seen in spring, what you've seen this season, what do you think of Noda? Well, spring uh, spring was a little rough. You know, he did, you know, had a nice couple first games, then the strikeouts just started to pile up. I know, you know, he's always been kind of a high walk, high strikeout guy throughout the minors, but it was a little severe. Sounds like an Oakland A already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a little severe, more severe than I think the A's were hoping for in spring, but he's, you know, his first game, yes, first start yesterday, gets a couple of knocks. That's always a positive. Um but, I mean, he fits the profile of, you know, what the Oakland A's look for in a guy, right? Uh, you know, good defense at first. He can hit home runs. He can, he'll draw walks. He is going to strike, come with strikeouts. But, um, you know, the way he was driving the ball yesterday, that that's what he could do on a, on a normal basis. He's, he's done that throughout the minors. He's just been waiting for his opportunity. And, um, like I said, a really nice guy to get in and talk to him. You know, he had, like, 20 people out here for opening night. He was telling me about his grandma. He, she's watched every single game of his since – college throughout the minor leagues even when she's on vacation she tunes in on the radio somehow so that was a cool moment for him to to share with that and i think as he gets to settle in you know and play every day hopefully he can you know prove himself and stick here at the at the major level because i mean first base is wide open i mean jesus aguilar is there but there's no real guy uh you know that's cemented in that role um for the future so uh, he could he could you know go a long ways and and showing himself you know as a long term piece of this A's team whether it's at first base I know he's played a little bit of outfield as well and that's been mentioned as a possibility so if the bat can play I mean the A's will have a guy in them who who they can count on for a few years. Are you ready for the uh, ultimate spin job I put on the Fuji outing? Let's hear it. All right. So here you have a guy making his first start in a foreign country. He's doing it with all the Japanese media here because the biggest star in the game, Shohei Otani, is here. A guy that he grew up playing against in high school. They've known each other for a long, long time. So everybody back in their home country, like literally millions are watching the game. So this is just not a a, a first start. They're giving away (laughs) T-shirts with your name on it in your first start, which never, never happened. You had all this stuff going on. This wasn't a regular start. I mean, when you talk about a country, a foreign country, it's not foreign to them, but back home in Japan, everybody's watching and it's your first start. It's not like you're taking the ball in Tampa. It's a whole different ball. So I think all of that, and you throw in Angels, good lineup. I think you have to flush that. This is my ultimate spin. You flush that. Now tell me what he got does going to Tampa because not all the Japanese media is going to be there. Not everybody in Japan is now going to be watching. Then you're going to have what? You're going to have the Mets, the Rangers after that. I think let's see those starts because that'll be a little more normal because his first start was totally abnormal. Yeah, I mean that was yeah that was it was quite the scene like you mentioned with the with the with the jerseys of him. 
I was surprised by that. There was a lot. The whole lower bowl was filled with those jerseys. And, um, you know, you mentioned the media. It's, it's just been crazy. It, you know, being a beat writer here for, you know, the past, you know, four or five years now, it's, it, you know, we don't get, we, we haven't been seen, seen scenes like that since I've been here. So um, I'm sure it's, you know, can be nerve wracking for him to, to have to go through all that. And, and you know, like you mentioned, him pitching in Tampa, it's going to be a whole different scene. I mean, I'm sure stadium isn't going to be very packed. There won't be a lot of media there. I'm sure he could just treat it a little bit more normal. Um, I know there was nerves for his first big league start. How could there not be after I all mean, those just, years? Just, you have nerves. Anybody, I mean, we were talking yeah. to Kyle Muller, the nerves he had. Now throw on top of it, everybody back home is watching. Like, yeah. we, we got to actually, with the WBC, really see the power and the ratings that the Japanese players really get in their home country. It's it's incredible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every, any, I mean, any and every, any Japanese player that comes over here, I mean, they're, they get their, assigned their own media contingent. They follow them everywhere. So he'll have some guys in, in Tampa Bay, some, some media members in Tampa Bay, I'm sure, that are going to be traveling there as well. But, I mean, it won't be to that extent. I mean, with, you mentioned with Otani and, and opening weekend, it was just the perfect storm there. Um, but, I mean, it was – the, the thing with him is it's going to be must watch every time he goes out regardless. Right. Cause you, you don't know what's going to happen. You, you hope he can put it all together, but I mean, he could look dominant at times and just lose it. And and you hope at some point he can kind of, you know, hone that in a little bit and maybe the, the spurts of, you know, non-control can be a little less severe than they were in that, in that first game, because we saw it in spring, you know, he would have some inning, an inning where he's, you know, maybe not at his best, but then he comes back and he finishes off to start strong. So, um, you know, maybe you get a chance to do that here in, in Tampa Bay. He's going to go up against a pretty good offense, as you just mentioned them right now. Um, but, um, you know, a little bit more normal circumstances, maybe, you know, he could settle in a little more. So you're buying my spin. I, I am. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a good seller, Tony. Absolutely. 100%. What am I supposed to do? Bury him after one start? Everybody wanted to bury him. I'm like, come on. There was yeah. a lot going on. Here. I mean, we were doing the show here. Like, picture where we're doing the show. You see the fans behind us. And all of a sudden, at one point, all the members of the Japanese media yeah. were like right up on me and their cameras were right. I'm like, what are they doing? Yeah. He was running. Yeah, it was wild. He oh. was running. He wasn't throwing. He wasn't stretching. He didn't have any equipment. He was just running poles, foul pole to foul pole, foul pole. And they had all these cameras. And I'm just like, wow. Yeah. And the, the post, the post game scrum was out insane. I mean, it was like, I mean, I've covered playoffs here. It's like, it was like, you know, covering, the ALCS, like the, the room was jam packed with media members, cameras, you know, everyone broadcasting back in Japan. So, um, you know, it, it, I could see how, how a situation like that can be a little intimidating. So uh, maybe maybe you'll get used to it a little more. He, he said, he, you know, he was used to in, in Japan having a bunch of media members there. But, you know, now obviously being here, you know, against the game's best uh, going up against a lineup like that. I mean, things, you know, can snowball on you a little quickly here so um you got to give him more time obviously it's only one start so i mean he's, he's gonna get some time here to adjust uh, obviously mlb.com they want you guys to constantly be weighing in before the season new rules what do you think well now that we've gotten to see it beyond spring training real games all the different rules what do you think i think it's great i think it's great for baseball i mean we've eliminated the dead time which is great i mean you so many times you know you remember last year I mean, what stands out to me over the weekend was that game on Saturday, right? It was like 13 to one and it was still 224. Yes. I mean, a game like that last year, <laughs> you're looking at like three, close to three and a half hours, just painful uh, being up there. And so now, you know, there's a lot more action. It, it feels like the action is just nonstop. And as, as the game gets on into the later innings, it's just, it's more exciting because, you know, guys on the mound can't take their time and slow things down. They got to throw the ball right away. And, um, you know, it leads to a lot more action, um, you know, we haven't like the A's haven't, you know, stolen a ton of bases, but you look around the league, there's more stolen bases, you know, a lot more runs are being scored, you know, not just with the home run. I mean, for the long time, longest time, it was like, you know, home run or strikeout. Right. And now we're getting back to a little bit more old school baseball, moving runners over and stuff. So I think overall, I, I don't see any downsides to it. It's been great for the game, I think. And it, I think more fans, I talked to people who are, you know, kind of not really that big into baseball. They're enjoying it more because, you know, they don't, you know, it's not as boring to them. You know, it's it's all action all the time. There's no dead time. Yeah, and, and people keep talking about it's it's really the older generation of writers, broadcasters, who have brought up the but the moments. Are we still going to get the moments with this pitch clock? Will we have the? It's like, well, last time I checked, um, basketball still has a clock. Yeah. They still have moments. 
Um, that thing called the Super Bowl and the NFL, don't they still have great moments in their history with this cl- with a the clock? They figure even golf, they put you on the clock if you're playing too slow. Right. So it's like I, other sports still have great moments with a clock. Yeah, I think it's just, I mean, you get used to something for so long that, you know, when change comes, it, you know, some people can be a little bit hesitant and, and, and nervous. But I think, you know, five years from now, you know, we're looking at the clock. It's going to be normal. No, I don't think anybody will have re- – Nobody should be complaining about it right now, but really you won't have any reason to complain about it. There's still going to be moments. You're still going to have big moments. Look at yesterday. Seth Brown at that homer off Class A. Did the pitch timer affect that? No, no. There was nothing affecting it. It was still Boom. a great baseball game. And there it ended go. in what? It, that game yesterday could have been like four hours. If you oh, get oh, 12 to 11? <laughs> we could still be playing it. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, Class A only gave up three home runs in 72 and two-thirds. Cody, 72 and two-thirds last year? Yeah, it was three home runs. Yeah, yeah. That, that sounds right with the innings. And then all of a sudden you have the game tying Jack to center last night. I mean, that was super exciting. Yeah. So, and then the other thing, I don't know about you, but unless there actually is a violation, I don't notice the clock that much. No. Um, it's so back to normal with defense. You you notice, you know, the whole shifting thing's not a deal. You know, it's not Marcus Simeon going into right <laughs> field anymore. It's yeah. now, it's back to like to normal. So you don't even notice that they're not mm-hmm. shifting. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's just it, it feels normal, um, you know, and all these pitchers are, are used to it by now. I, I think in spring there were some guys who were like, oh, I don't know, this might be an issue, but they, they seem to have adjusted to it pretty quick. So um, I, don't, I don't foresee that being causing any problems. Seth Brown had a strikeout yesterday with the with the auto K. Um, yeah. But I mean, th- those those times are going to be really rare. I, it's it's never, you know, and I'm sure at some point it's going to happen in a dramatic moment and we're going to get the headlines. You know, it's going to be all over ESPN. You know, like we saw in spring one game when the game ended on the auto K. But um, for the most part, you know, people are adjusting to the rules quick. The players, I think, have adjusted to it quicker than maybe, you know, some people might have expected. I don't think it's I don't think it's a problem for any of them. So I don't think, you know, fans should be too uh, you know, worried about it. Let's end on this. I, I, I've liked asking this question to people. It just seems our game's got a lot of good momentum. WBC, uh, the commissioner was on MLB net where talking about the success and how it, it brings the casual. The casual fan got into it this year yeah. and the new rules, as you mentioned, people are like, hey, it's not as slow. Do, do you feel like our sport has a lot of good momentum going into this season absolutely and you mentioned the, the wbc i mean there were fan there were you know people that i talked to who you know don't watch baseball at all they were getting into it um it's just it it brought you know baseball into us into a forum that we haven't seen in a while you know we, nfl nba all that stuff you know that that's you know still on top right now i feel like in terms of popularity but i think baseball with with what happened with wbc and what's happening with the new rules with the games being quicker and more action it's going to start to gain even more momentum and i think um you know you're looking at the next generation of, of you know players you know kids looking watching these games maybe they're going to get more interested in it and want to play baseball you know as a career as opposed to you know all the kids that are shifting over over recent years to football and and basketball and um you know i think for sure. I mean, it's right now it's at an all time high right now. And I think it's only going to grow as the season goes along. I, I think about the great work that you do and it's kind of getting scary how the newspapers are truly just going away. Like your guy's job on MLB.com is second to none, but our days of newspapers and traveling with the team, like you're going to be the only guy traveling with the team. Is that crazy? That's it is nuts. Uh, it's weird. I, I know I mean, it's good for you and readers <laughs> yeah, and everything, but it's but, also kind of like what what's going yeah. on? I mean, I, you know, I started out on the newspaper side, so I, I I know how it is, you know, and it's 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 sad to see it, you know, because I mean, newspapers are super important. I hope they're always around, um, you know, because we need that not just for sports, but for everything in our, our, our daily lives. So I'm hoping that situation improves a little bit. But, yeah, it is going to be weird. I mean, it, there were a couple of you know, instances last year where I was the only guy on the road. There were a couple of times where I wasn't on the road um, and there was nobody out there. So um, you that's know, why we have Ace Cast and Ace <laughs> Cast Live. Yeah. We're yeah. the last line of defense, baby. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, it is a little different, but, you know, you adjust to it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll try to, you know, take advantage of it as much as I can. Um, but, you know, it is, it is, it's the year we're living in right now. You know? You're it. Yeah. You're our guy. It's on me. It's, it's all on me. you. If this season goes south, it's all on this guy. Blame me. <laughs> Always great to have you. Good I appreciate you, it. Thank you.